cute, isn't he? Yes, you are. In a few years, when he's full grown, he'll be three times as strong as I am, and he won't be so cute anymore. He's a chimpanzee, one of the great apes. People who study apes learned a long time ago that chimps are among the smartest creatures on Earth. They're just about as smart as we are. Now, what do I mean by smart? I'll tell you. We consider ourselves smart because we use tools, because we communicate with each other, and because we solve problems by thinking. We also pride ourselves on the fact that we have organized societies. Did you hear that? And that we live by rules and laws. But well, all of those things are true of chimpanzees as well. Back in 1971, a new chimp enclosure was opened at the Arnhem Zoo in the Netherlands. The chimps were given enough space to live almost as if they were really in the wild. The colony started with a few adult females and their offspring, and then adult males were introduced. Scientists and students came to observe their behavior. The record of the chimp community over the next decade reads like a novel. It has all the elements of the history of any human community. Love, power struggles, reconciliation, and even murder. This zoo is like any other, except for one thing. It contains the world's only chimpanzee colony of this kind. In the winter and at night, they are housed inside. But in the summer, they spend their days outside. Like any human colony, this one also has a history which revolves around the struggle for power. Mama, the oldest female, was dominant from 1971 to 1974. This is Loit, the alpha male. He won power in 1976 from this male, Euroian. Euroian had taken over from Mama. Nicky. In 1976, he was the number three male in the hierarchy, but he wanted to be number one. In their African rainforest, this troop would have spread itself over several square miles. Here, their territory is two and a half acres. Many young ones have been born to the colony, and like kids anywhere, they learn by playing and playing and playing some more. Dandy's the youngest adult male and the smartest. He trained the keeper to give him a banana as a bribe before he'd go out to the yard. Loit, the dominant male, didn't like the fact that Dandy had something he didn't have. Loit let everybody know that, especially Dandy. Royan has had his eye on Dandy for some time. There is a rim to their world, the moat. And to escape, the chimps would have to jump or swim. But it's a good place to get a drink. Some prefer drinking from a cup. The cup came off the electrified fence around the trees. The trees are fenced with shock wire because chimps love fresh leaves. Without the wire, they'd have stripped all the trees bare in no time. So the wire has become a challenge for every generation. Adolescence is a tough time for chimps, especially for the males. Sometimes they get pretty wild, and they get into big trouble. The males usually express themselves by bluffing or beating up the females. The bigger the sound and fury, the better. Mama is very calm. She's seen it all before. When one of the males gets into this kind of mood, 
she's the only one who seems able to get through to him. The adolescents who act up are only following the example of the adult males. Nikki used to go on great rampages. He'd thump a female, like Spin here, in order to point out to her that she would do better in life if she didn't cross tough guys, like Nikki. In 1976, Nikki had his eye on the top job, and the rampage was part of his election campaign. Spin cut her hand. It's the dominant male's job to intervene and settle disputes. So Spin asked Lloyd to protect her from Nikki, and Lloyd obliged. In that way, he won Spin's support in future squabbles. But Nikki didn't back down easily. Uroyan, who once was the dominant male, could see that Nikki might soon be strong enough to challenge Lloyd. Nikki had to win the female's respect first. He didn't have it, and everybody knew it. Gorilla is frightened. Finally, Spin had enough support to go after Nikki herself. Mama was on her side, and that was enough. Uroyan had lost his job to Lloyd when Lloyd beat up the females, and Uroyan was unable to protect them. Dandy has been trying to think of a way to get at those leaves. Gorilla knows about using sticks, and her technique is admirable. But there has to be a better way. Young Walter is fascinated. Dandy picks up a bigger stick and climbs it to get into the tree. Walter watches carefully. Lloyd goes up too. And then Walter takes a shot at it. Nikki's turn. Mama's too old to climb. Lloyd drops down leaves for everybody. In the wild, food is sometimes shared. Here, treats like this are always shared. As summer of 1976 wore on, it became clear that Lloyd was losing control. Nikki became more and more aggressive, erupting into magnificent displays of temper against the females. He ran through the colony like wildfire. Uroyan watched and waited while Lloyd began to recognize his growing helplessness. Uroyan could not handle Lloyd by himself, but if he and Nikki formed a team, Lloyd would be out in the cold. So Uroyan spent more and more time with Nikki. Lloyd couldn't do much about that either. Uroyan was crafty. Nikki was strong. It looked like a formidable match. Everybody felt the tension. Uroyan began to show his support for Nikki. Together, they both tried to get support from Mama, because without Mama's approval, no change in the power structure could be smooth. Mama kissed Nikki and Uroyan, and even patted Lloyd. But Lloyd needed more than Mama's support. When Nikki and Uroyan began to punish females together, Lloyd's position was in real danger. And no one seemed to know that better than Lloyd. The power struggle went on from 1976 to 1978. Inside the great hall the chimps used for exercise, Lloyd was terrorized by the new allies, Uroyan and Nikki. 
the old fox and the young tiger. The halls rang with the screams of their bluffs and displays. Nicky was the strongest. He seemed to become more and more violent. And after he'd slapped young Walter against a wall, the researcher moved him away from the community, thinking he was too young to be an alpha male. Lloyd and Uroyan came into direct conflict immediately. In the spring of 1978, the colony was released outdoors. The role of alpha male was still up for grabs. And then Nicky rejoined the troop. Within a week, it was all over. Researchers at first misunderstood the nature of Nicky's relationship with Uroyan. They thought Nicky was the dominant one. After all, he was greeted in a subservient way by most of the females and males. Experiments were done to examine how the group worked. Grapefruit was put out one day. Dandy got some. He hid his in the moat. He knew he was the only one who was not afraid of the water. Nicky was too busy displaying to get any. <laughs> He slowly worked himself into a real lather. Mama, daughter Monique, and Jonas ate in a tree. Nicky went up to exercise his authority. He slammed at Mama. She screamed with rage. After all, she had a special relationship with Nicky. They'd been special friends for years. Keppo comforted her. Nicky came back, but Mama was still mad. And so Nicky got mad again, too. But Jerome showed his anger at the females as well. Nicky did not rule alone. Uroyan and Nikki had formed a coalition. Once again, Uroyan showed that he dominated Lloyd by running his arm over Lloyd's back. Uroyan and Nikki had made a deal, but eventually Nikki tried to renege. Uroyan withdrew his support. Rapidly, Lloyd regained power, and then, in the winter of 1980, after Nicky and Uroyan had patched things up, they murdered Lloyd. The murder created a lasting peace. And with peace came a return to the pleasures of chimpanzee life. Even the big males were playful. Nicky and Uroyan shared power and the spoils of power, the right to mate undisturbed. Dandy had made a date with Puis. Nicky didn't like that. Oh no, said Nicky. Nicky reminded Dandy that he didn't permit the younger males to mate with one of the females. Uroyan had the right to mate with any female. In fact, it was when Nicky tried to renege on those rights that Uroyan broke the partnership. Walter has been working on ways to climb a tree since he was a baby. He needs something tall to stand on so that he can leap up into the branches. The tree trunk is so big, Walter discovers that rolling it is easier than pulling it. have to think of something else. By 1982, the two big males still spent most of their time together. Dandy had been watching them a long time. He was ready to take his place among them. In fact, he got between them. Nicky didn't like that at all. He hit a female to show that, but he seemed reluctant to confront Dandy. 
Dandy tried again. Nicky was furious. He ran to Mama for reassurance. Dandy ran to Mama, too. But Mama turned her back on him. Nicky and Uroyan hugged each other to show they still supported each other. Uh-oh. Trouble. Nicky bluff. But Dandy refused to submit. So everyone went after Dandy, even the youngsters. Dandy had no support. He was too young to be taken seriously, even though he was big enough to give Nicky trouble. Nicky and Uroyan were still in control. Walter has figured out a new approach. He holds out his hand to Dandy to ask permission to go first. Dandy is not dominant, but adolescents like Walter give him respect, or else. Well, success at last. After a prodding, he does the right thing. He shares with everyone. The partnership between Nicky and Uroyan lasted until 1983. Dandy kept putting himself in between them. It was as if he had observed their coalition and then offered himself to Uroyan in Nicky's place. When Uroyan began to spend time with Dandy, Nicky got very upset. The whole colony was in an uproar. In confrontations, Nicky ran to Mama for support. Some of the females were never really on Nicky's team. They supported Uroyan. The trouble was, Nicky had nowhere to run, nowhere to escape to. He was trapped. In the winter of 1983, Dandy terrified Nicky. One day in spring, his keeper took Nicky out. Nicky ran full tilt for the moat and drowned. Perhaps Nicky remembered the fate of Lloyd. Nicky and Uroyan had bitten him to death, and perhaps Nicky didn't care if he survived his leap to freedom. By the winter of 84, Dandy was still struggling to replace Nicky, but things were shaky. Some thought Uroyan would not accept Dandy that he would try to be the sole dominant male again in this unique new wilderness. In 12 years, 50 chimps have been born to the colony. So if children are riches, the chimps at Arnhem have prospered. A whole generation of human students has stood outside the moat and taken note of the goings on. One of them, Dr. Franz Seval, even wrote a book on the politics he observed on the intricate relations between cooperating females and competing males. The Arnhem story makes you wonder, has any human society produced a more canny politician than Uroyan, who still, after all these years, holds the balance of power in his hands? The Arnhem chimps are more than an interesting collection of animals. They're intelligent individuals. Do we have the right to pen them up? or to interfere with their lives at all. Anton van Hoof, the zoo director, thinks that we have no choice. Without colonies like Arnhem, he says, in 50 years there won't be any chimps left anywhere in the world. While those at Arnhem experience great stress during power struggles, because there's no escape for losers, he believes they face less trouble here than they would in the wild where chimps must run for their lives before the onslaught of predators, human or otherwise, even in national parks. Van Hoof argues that it is better for chimps to live as prisoners in places like Arnhem than to die in the new wilderness.
you just watched a unique new nature series that introduced you to a world of adventure, excitement, and intrigue. Lorne Green's New Wilderness. But the fun doesn't stop here. There are many more episodes to choose from. Each program will bring you into the mysterious habitat of the wild. You learn to be a part of nature, hunt for food, take care of the family, share in blossoming relationships. It's all here. Real life animal adventures. It's a whole new wilderness out there. It's more than a place. It's a frame of mind, a series of actions. It's a new phase of history that's being created today. And you and your family can be part of it. The series is a whole new concept in home video entertainment. It's infotainment, informative, educational, entertaining, repeatable. Collect them all. and cheer with Lorne Green's New Wilderness. It'll be a valued treasure in your home video library for years and years to come. So come along with me on the adventures of a lifetime, the whole new world of the new wilderness. Lorne Green's New Wilderness, from Prism Entertainment.